students are using a new program called CoSpaces this year that allows them to create a virtual reality and uh, you know augmented reality and virtual reality are both really new exciting things in education so this allows students to to get started creating the basic virtual reality to uh, to create some digital learning experiences well since we are a one-to-one -one laptop school it really makes using CoSpaces super simple. Students can log into the program on their laptop and it's a Google sign in which makes it really easy. They can log in and create everything in their space on their laptop. They can also um, log in on an iPad, see the, um, see the space in 360 and what's really better even more exciting is bumping it up and logging in on their cell phone to the app, viewing their projects using just the basic Google Cardboard. So, CoSpaces itself is a free program. Um, I bought a couple of the Google Cardboard viewers for $15 a piece. Actually, they're two for $25. So, we got into virtual reality in a very inexpensive way. So, here I'm here to talk about um, CoSpaces. This is a new site that allows you to create your own virtu virtual reality. You are able to build your own and uh, then explore it in your own virtual reality goggles. So here's my opening screen as soon as I've logged in. Um, it's sort of just a mess, just my random stuff that I have here. But most importantly, it has my projects. Um, this is my Finding Pets projects project. Um, it was originally just going to be this bunch of trees with these two cabins in it. And then, uh, to make it a little bit more interesting, I decided to make it into a game. Um, so I use this code option over here with this Blockly script. Uh, you can drag and drop it, but I used it to uh, use the activate. So when you activate these guys, they say things. I also decided to make some things move, like my horse, as you can see over um, over here, my horse, you name them and then you can select them. And then up here, I have my uh, birds, they, they just go in circles. Um, but yeah, that's the code. To get the blocks, um, you go over here to your library. Then you're able to, okay, come on, load. drag and drop your objects that you would like. Um, where are you? Okay, here you are. Um, you're able to drag and drop your projects. I mean, your objects that you would like. Uh, uh, you can p reposition them, rotate them, all that good stuff. You can also recolor them. So like this rock here, you double click on it, and you're able to change the color. Let's go with blue. So there's just going to be a random blue rock here. Um, you can also change the view of the starting camera, like the position where you first start. Here's this camera. Um, you first start uh, where that camera is looking. As you can see, it highlights where it's looking. So it's pretty easy to tell, and there's, like, yeah, the line. Um, so here I'm going to play it. Uh, should load. And then, uh. Okay, so now that it's loaded, <laughs> um, here is my world. Here, as you can see, this little snake right here, he's moving. Well, he was. There he goes. Um, if you click on him, as you can tell, you, you find them. Uh, but this is my world. It, oh, here's the blue rock. Uh, it was supposed to just be sort of this forest thing. Um, but the best, I think, what really pulls it all together is the fact that it's in this sort of like glass dome thing. Um, it's, it sort of makes it look like a a, um, what do you call it, a snow globe. So here it is, um, you're able to click on most of these animals. Um, when you click on them, they let you know that uh, you found them, like this unicorn in here. Um, so here is my first, my sign right here. Oh, hello little bunny. Oh no, I haven't fixed you. Oh, okay. Okay, so, um, Mainly what I'm doing is pretty much showing you uh, how to use it, how easy it is. 
um, you can purchase these custom objects with coins. You get like 100 coins when you first start. So here's this rock. Looks really amazing. But you can buy new custom objects, I guess. And um, here in the marketplace, you can choose them. Uh, you can purchase them, but uh, as you can tell, I'm out of coins right here. You can add them, but I guess that's not really that useful. We can get these like these wheels and stuff. Um, you can also change the environment, like the size. You can also add sounds in the background. Um, you can set the time of day. Um, you can select this. You can also upload 360 degree pictures. You can't move. Um, in them. can't like move positions but you can um, look around it's pretty cool I, I made one of those um, but yeah this is CoSpaces this is my CoSpaces project um, it's pretty easy to use I like it um, very simple and it's yeah it's pretty cool So most people are going to associate virtual reality with gaming because it's hugely popular right now with lots of different gaming platforms. Um, but it's actually being being used more and more to help people kind of understand the world that they live in. You know, my students here are creating projects based on a story that they want to tell. But virtual reality is being used in education to allow students to take field trips to places that they would otherwise never be able to visit. Um, there's a, the Titans of Space app right now will allow you to explore the entire solar system as an astronaut. It gives you this incredible view of all the planets that, that make up our solar system. And, and other apps that um, allow you to explore the human body, uh, the new Z space computers that have just come out, allow you to really get in there and interact with the different organs and things like that. So educational uses, I think we're just beginning to really fully appreciate the value that there is. But virtual reality is also being used, of course, a lot by the entertainment industry, but also healthcare. You know, doctors, nurses, people are using it to, to try to figure out problems and illnesses. Even the automotive industry is trying to, um, to use virtual reality now to make sure that your new car is exactly what you want it to be, that the driving experience is a good one. So it's it's really becoming pretty mainstream. So since this is a new program and my first time using it with students, I left the project very open-ended. I didn't give the students a lot of um, requirements or your project has to include this or that. I wanted it to be very open-ended. Um, I wanted the students just to kind of tell their own story. I think next year when I do this again, I want to give them a little more structure just because I think they need more support. I think a lot of my students could have continued working on their projects for weeks and weeks and weeks. They were, the, you know, the more familiar they became with the software, the more comfortable they were. They could see some of the things that you could do with it. I think definitely, um, as far as using it in other curricular areas, as far as language arts, instead of having students maybe read a book, do a PowerPoint, why not have them use virtual reality to recreate a favorite scene from the book where you're putting the character in to the setting and you're telling the story that way. I think it makes it very interactive. Our eighth grade science students you know, study the periodic table. Why not have them make 3D models in virtual reality of the elements from the periodic table. I think that would be a wonderful move. You could also even create interactive scenes from history, you know, famous battles um, with the important people that were there that were part of it and see the interaction take place. So I, I'm really excited when, um, when I try this again next year with my students to see where we go. So I'm Vicki Winstead, I'm the teacher librarian at Vance Middle School, and you can contact me via email at winsteadv, W-I-N-S-T-E-A-D-V, at vtcs.org, and please, please, please follow me on Twitter. It's at vms underscore library.